Today I want to talk about um, small talk in enterprise architectures and enterprise applications, big systems. A um, little bit of background. I'm working for Novatech, which is an IT company in Germany based in near Stuttgart and with offices in Frankfurt and Munich. And I moved to Novatech about two months ago, coming from Syncom. And it was an interesting time the last two months being dipped head over into enterprise applications which are built for 30,000 users with 10,000 transactions in an hour um, coming from Smalltalk, and I'd like to take you on this discovery trip. The idea is, is there a home for Smalltalk in such systems? Systems that are completely dominated by JEE. So I had to learn a lot about JEE, knowing it from the past, and had to reverse some of my opinions at this time. So, if you are going into enterprise architectures, you see such diagrams. Um, enterprise architecture, scoping ideas, um, like TOGAF, the open um, um, architecture framework for um, planning complete enterprise architectures. And they are structuring the system coming from the bottom, from the operating system, from the hardware, over middleware solution, application platform, your individual software development, and finally the business. So don't want to read all this. JEE dominates a good bit of this architecture picture. And so the question is, if we have our small balloon, where can it land without being shot down? Let's see. Well, it flies a bit. And it lands somewhere in the area of um, the individual specialized components, things that are, might be developed in scripting languages or in Ruby or in Lua, whatever comes into mind, when you are allowed to leave the standard system of JEE, when standards that the platform is completely tested and developed, tested by 10,000 of applications, is no longer important, but being individual, being specialized to your business is important. That's a place where Smarter could play. So, to understand why Smalltalk has a difficulty to find a landing place, let's look back 15 years. Turn back the clock by 15 years. What was it for a time? It was a time when Smalltalk was mature already. I would dare to say it didn't change much in its language, in its conception since 15 years ago. And Java fought for a reason to exist. Um, I was sitting at Max Planck Institute and looking at the Java specification and laughing hardly. It really was a joke language for us. We looked at it and say, what's this worth for? We were completely wrong. Because if we now say classes in 2010, what do we have in 2010? Java is the biggest player in the enterprise market. It's except for standard software like SAP or Oracle, it's the only player if you do individual software development. In Smalltalk, that was a pain. I came into a company, Novatec was founded as a Smalltalk company with Enf and Smalltalk. And they tell me, nobody in their market knows Smalltalk. It's completely no name. You couldn't mention it if you say, we want to do development with Java and let's use Smalltalk for that. Nobody knows it. So, the question is, what happened? What can we do against it? This is a wake-up call for you. This is definitely a job that cannot be done by one company or by one man. It's a job that needs to be done by all the vendors and the community because it needs to create enough momentum and it's such a large thing to implement that I can understand that no vendor has implemented it alone. Well, Gemstone went a long way into that but it's not JEE, so that's a problem. Wake up. We have to admit JEE, Enterprise Java Beans, are going to be here for a long time. It's kind of the next COBOL for us. We have to live probably till the end of my, my work time, probably. And the idea is we need to put Smalltalk into action in this JEE-centric world. Why do we need it? Because this is where the money is. This is where the really big money is. Huge projects to develop, enough budgets to play around with, and why should we waste this opportunity? So, what do we do? 
we want to make small talk a first class citizen in this world. It shouldn't be the alien that is difficult to argue why you should use it. It should just be usable, out of the box. So we have to find out what needs to be changed in small talk. Certainly something is missing. And secondly, what needs to be added to integrate this system into JE because we cannot work around it. So, there's no question that Smalltalk at the language level is a great language. Absolutely no question about this. Java really sucks big time compared to Smalltalk. Well, I have no, a direct comparison for some time and I used Java for many years before. So it has less syntax, it has less boilerplate code for your language level tasks. Everything is shorter, simpler to read, to manipulate. Java AE is excellent at the architecture level. You have less frameworks to write yourself, and you have to less boilerplate code for architecture level tasks, say transactional control, persistent control, whatever you want, name it. Everything that has to do with big systems is simpler in JEE. Now, uh, some of you looked a bit suspicious. Do you think that AGB programming or Java A JEE is awful to write? Is difficult, complicated? You have to learn a lot of stuff. Well, you have to learn a lot of stuff. Do you really believe that? Well, I believed that before I read into JEE 6. And I said, whoa, what's this? Let's try it with the simplest possible example, Hello World. Hello World AGB style. It used to be a bit of writing, a bit of write-up in the past. Let's see how it looks today, because that's an interesting message. What does it look like today? Well, you need a bean. That means you need to have a Java class that returns Hello World as a service. That's the bit here between public class and the closing brackets. It's a string method, returning method, say hello, returns Hello World. Now, what does this make an enterprise Java bean? It's the two red things, the two annotations here, stateless and remote. This is meta information, like a pragma in VisualWorks, that tells the EGB server when you deploy it, and he reads everything you deploy to it, tells us, do a lot of meta programming and a lot of configuration for me. Create everything that you need to make this simple class a stateless session bean that is accessible from the outside as a remote bean. You don't have to know anything of what's going on there. It simply works. You just do it and the bean is deployed. You, deploying means you just drop it in the auto-deploy directory of Glassfish, for instance. A second later, you see that it has seen it, has read it, has created everything it can go on. That's EGB style today. On the client side, it's even as simple. Well, it's still a lot of Java mambo jumbo here with public static void main blah. can never remember that bit. You have your print method, like the transcript show you would in, do in VisualWorks. And the only thing that you need to have, you need to get a reference to this AGB on the server side. And you simply say, with this AGB annotation to the client application, find this bean and inject a reference to it in the local variable. That's all I have to do, and it works immediately. It's two minutes. This is not too complicated, isn't it? So, but what did we gain by using EGB instead of Hello World directly? We've got all this server stuff for free, instantly. We didn't need to care about it. We've got a scalable system, robust for thousands of users. We've got distributed server architecture. We've got a standard persistent system, JPA, Java Persistent Architecture and a distributed transactional control system for free, completely built in. And believe me, it's controlled by annotation in the same simple style. We've got separation of client and remote business logic by components, a good thing. And finally, we've got a complete component lifecycle. You don't, don't need to care about how your beans are created, destroyed, persisted, whatever. It's completely automatic. Everything for free. And all implemented by a, standard, uh, by a lot of vendors based on standard frameworks. So it's completely portable. It is really deep, completely portable now. I like this. I've been working with Smarter for 25 years, but I like this stuff. It's still the Java language behind it, but the architecture stuff is great. 
So the question is, why don't smart attackers do this all the time or did invent this themselves? And well, the answer is, Java took its time to get to this point. AGB 1.0 specification was a disgrace for computing, believe me. And Ellen, Ellen, are you here? Yeah, you can tell a bit of war stories maybe if you want later, for somebody interested, where we talked about how this specification was created years ago. It really was ugly, and it was a few kilometers of paper more to write to get to the same example. It really took time. I don't want to go through this time list here. It's 15 years of Java. It's 15 years of discovery, of trying new things, of learning, of destroying things that didn't work out. I just want to point out the tense years. 2005, Java had 10 years, and it had 4.5 million developers worldwide. So completely irregardless of how good or bad the language is, this is the most impressive run of a software specific technology all times, and will probably never be topped again. This is the most successful piece of software development. And it has all the money, and it's all the communities, and all the projects. So the interesting bit is, what did the Java community learn? So this is a slide I have to go through a few minutes. The first thing they learned is POJOS, plain old Java objects. They learned that it is a good thing to separate your business classes from the additional infrastructure information that you need to run it in, in a kind of an environment, like technical superclasses, it's like the data lens of VisualWorks, which has a specific superclass to use. So you all have all your business objects being the, um, located under the data object hierarchy for the, data, for the lens. They learned that it is a bad thing to have framework-specific code in your business object because it makes it completely unportable. So they learned POJOS is an important thing to have. Business logic should not contain any information about the technical infrastructure it runs in. They learned that beans, that components, are a good thing. Beans are a component uh, concept that's completely based on conventions. So you write it in a certain style, and the system discovers what it should mean. And it opens a complete market for tool vendors and framework vendors, because if, it, if you know how a component is structured from the outside, you can sell frameworks and tools for that, which we don't have in Smalltalk. They understood that dependency injection is a good thing, that you shouldn't do plumbing. Your business object shouldn't know how to create your database connection manually. Somebody else knows much better and has to inject into your component, completely inversion, inversion the control of building things. Inversion control was very important to have your business objects completely independent of the infrastructure. Annotations, metaprogramming. It's all about annotations either in your code or as XML files externally to get into um, separating um, the generation the, um, of your configuration from your programming. And finally, containers, the idea of having an instance that runs everything for you and you don't need to care about the lifetime. So a container is kind of an operating system for running enterprise beans. It's really the thing that creates it, that destroys it, that makes it able for you to find them. That's all you need to know about a container. So in AGB, this looks a bit like this here. You have the yellow ones are the containers on the server and the client side containing your business objects. They rely on a very large set of frameworks and base everything on the runtime environment. Don't want to go to this in all detail. Dependency injection annotation gives you pluggable components. Also resources or other infrastructure objects. Um, it's declarative. So um, you don't need to program a bit. You just say, I want this component at this place. And here's an example for a simple employee bean. Again, we have the annotation saying this is stateless and remote, telling the EGB server to create all the configuration for running it. And then we have this red line, persistent context entity manager, um, which simply says to the system, I need to have the entity manager variable be filled with a handle to their object in this context that does all the persistency. And the container, when this method is, this object is created, fills in a specific entity manager 
that knows about the current transaction, the current session, and everything else you need to know about so security settings. And this code doesn't care how it is created. It simply says, I need the current one here. And then it can, in the end, persist an object, the employee object for you. So no dependency on where you run it, how it's configured. Everything else is done in a separate place. And Smalltalk and the enterprise on the opposite, painful maybe, do it yourself. You have this great language, just write it. Excuse me? This is a bit of work if you do it all over again. No standard component model, very little declarativeness, Meta program is rarely used. No abstract standard for application infrastructure. You don't have an application model for server applications, a standard one that everybody is following, which would support tool development, framework development. So every project I've seen in the last 15 years on the server side looks different from the other one. It's always a new homebrew environment that you build up. So here's an example. Um, James Robertson is not here. I've seen done, didn't see him. There was an interesting um, post by Raymond Leon about work on a CSA application he was doing, and he discovered at a certain point he needs thread pulling to limit concurrency. And he said, okay, do it. And he posted about it. And James posted, yes, I have the same thing in my bottom feeder. Well, I could have made it a, a public, more open resource. I just plugged it in. Kind of, who cares? So it seems to be too simple to do something like a thread pool which is a crucial enterprise resource um, to um, um, say, well, let's build it once and for all for everybody. But the point is, not everybody is able to write such uh, infrastructure correctly, efficiently. And so you force, by not having a thread pool for everybody that's written once and great, you force everybody to learn how to do it and to do all the mistakes again. So do it yourself is not a good thing here. But why should we bother? Why shouldn't we say we've seen just a great CSAT application that talked before? Why should we bother doing these ugly business applications, which is about uh, moving accounts and numbers and customers, which is complete boring code, believe me. It's completely boring code. Nothing happy in there. Because Smart is great here. It is great for complex business concept modeling. It's really great for doing the stuff where you need to be agile, need to understand, learn things over time, where Java being just too tight and too well, screwed and to, to change it quickly. So it really is cheaper here. Uh, it's great for rapid domain changes. So that's a reason why, uh, at least in Germany, a lot of banks and insurances had small talk for their product. Because they had product changes every month or every quarter of a year and need to change the code for that. Small talk was great for that. Translation between domains, well, a bit of that is in Georg's talk maybe on Wednesday. Uh, but I've seen many projects where Smalltalk was part of a larger architecture where, um, in the end, the Smalltalk people were doing all the integration because it was cheaper for everybody. And there's a lot of good Smalltalk code around that we don't want to drop. Okay. What's the proposal here? This is kind of a call for the community, for the vendors. Is, um, don't try to reinvent or replace JEE. It doesn't work. This is an elephant you cannot push aside. So the idea is to do the old Smalltalk standby, model and integrate. Model the JEE structures and integrate this model into the JEE world in, in a JEE server. In the end, Smalltalk will become what I call a shadow container, a shadow system behind a JEE system, invisible to the architecture of the whole system, but doing actually important computations for that. We're going to see pictures later. So the benefit is you are part of the enterprise architecture, so you're not an alien anymore. You're part of the picture. You don't need to justify why you're there. You, in the same time, will have improved server qualities for small talk, which is definitely a good thing. Um, we would simplify the JE interface if we model um, the JE world on small talk because then we talk about the same life cycle of things, the same concept, so it's easier to bridge between the worlds. And finally, we would really enable tool vendors, third-party vendors, to have a market again, which I would love to see. So the to-do list is simple. We need to build first a container system with beans in Smalltalk. That's a list of the first five points. Really to be able to do the same 
positive things with dependency injection with POJOs on the Smartox side, creating a standard idea of a server application structure based on containers. And the next step is to implement an interface to the, of this structure into the JE world at the bean level. It might look like this. This is a sketch only, so there's no existing software behind it. It's just an idea. The idea is that on the Java side, you have got a proxy bean that represents a Java bean, a, a Smalltalk bean, um, and delegates all the computation to the Smalltalk side by a connector architecture. So from the system's view, there is no Smalltalk. It is shadowed. There is simply a Java bean that doesn't compute itself, but it remotes this computation to the Smalltalk side. By this picture, we inherit the transactional control, the security measures, everything of Java, JEE, we inherit here because the Java bean has all the information. The only thing that we don't inherit is scalability. This is the weak point of this picture because if you have a system that needs to run 30,000 users in an hour and we have maybe for each user 50 calls to our Smartox site for a specific computation, for a specific service, we still have to have a stable, robust, and scalable Smalltalk server. So that's the bit that needs to be programmed on the Smalltalk side. Failover security, if you have a messaging system, keeping the message, message queues alive. All the stuff that's in Gemstone already, I know. <laughs> Maybe we can use Gemstone and mold it into such a system. So which component should we use? We have many kind of beans in JEE. I would say for the start, we're going for session beans which are coming in two flavors, if you don't know that, in stateless and stateful session beans. Stateless ones are the ones that don't need a session to carry over the state to a next call, so they're used once and then they're used for somebody else. These are for the massive concurrent task. And stateful beans are the ones that keep your state attached to a session for a longer period of time and that are used, so for instance, for workflow tasks. We should concentrate on this. We shouldn't talk about persistency at this time because it adds further complexity. And we shouldn't talk about the other types of beans like messaging beans, singleton beans, and whatever we have. Keep it simple for the first one. And I have here some ideas how it might look on the Smartox side so that you don't be afraid that you need to program Java in the end. On the Smartox side, we could use pragmas attached to class definitions, which is a new syntax where we can say, well, this class is actually a bean called Hello World. It is stateful. It has the ability to be used remotely or locally. And then for the purpose of the remoting, we need to give some type information to the methods. That's the price to pay if you want to do remoting. If you have better ideas, come to me. Now, then we need containers to, carry, to, to, to make these beans being creatable, findable. And well, they use, should use dependency injection, they should use beta programming, and they do everything that a Java container also should do. And once we have a, single, a simple container in Ocean, we can extend them being for efficiency like threaded or pooling containers, um, keeping a certain amount of instances of our beans around for efficiency. Uh, we could add transactional behavior, we could add logging behavior, security behavior as a specialization to that. But we just, uh, need to start with containers and a, a component deployment description could look like this. Uh, don't read all the details. It's simply the idea you could use your pragmas to configure your beans or you could write a descriptor that looks a little bit like C-side HTML generation here. So the structured idea. Simply saying we, this is overriding the pragmas. And we're saying this is a deployment descriptor of a container called sample container. So local code um, for your workspace examples might look like this. We are creating a local context, uh, the environment of our server. And we tell this, please give us um, the hello world bean. Then we set its name to Barcelona. And then we say transcript show. So that's the easy bit. That's a bit of work to do. So it could be easier if we are working in a container, we can use injection. We can say, OK, when we ha start this greet isaac method, the variable hello should be um, filled, 
injected with the Hello World bean, and the container is doing all the rest for us, looking it up, creating it, or whatever. So this becomes a very simple piece of code, and we don't have any plumbing anymore. It's completely independent of, of how the Hello World bean is created. And actually, in this example, we could go on and say in the deployment description and change the Hello World name to Hello World Barcelona. And this could be a different bean implementation that in the end puts out Ola Barcelona, for instance. And we wouldn't see much of this in our code. It's simply the, the container and the configuration is deciding which bean to inject. So that's the idea of dependency injection in um, Java, and we are trying to mirror this here. And how do we um, use this with the integration? There's so a few principles. It's very important. The smaller component is never accessed directly. This is the idea of the shadow container. It is represented by a, a Java bean component on the Java side. So for, from the point of view of the rest of the system, everything is Java beans. Simply that some of these Java beans don't compute themselves. But they send it through a connector um, system back to a smart site where it's computed. Um, the results are sent back. And this is not a simple thing to do because on the Java side we have true multi-threading, operating system level multi-threading. And this needs to be synchronized, of course, with the green threads of Smarter, of VisualWorks, for instance. If you look in the documentation of the GNI port or of Java, of, of Java Connect, which are available for various Smarter dialects, the matter of synchronization with threading is really painful. And it's not 100% solved yet. So this could be a very interesting thesis to write, maybe. So what are the options? We could use JNI as a set, which means we could, on the VisualWorks side, use the VM as a DLL and attach the Smalltalk VM to the process space of the Java server and have a direct C-level interconnection. I have no idea if this would work. I never tried it yet to start a Smalltalk image from a Java server VM. But this would be the most efficient solution, I would say. The other way around, which is usually done today, having a Smalltalk system started up first, and then it starts up all the dependent system, is no option with the Java enterprise world, of course, because it's a server that is managed by the operations at the customer side. And it, this one is started and should start everything else it needs. If we are really cheap, we could use web services for a start. Hmm? Or we could use, if somebody implements it, RMI. It would be great to have that, because that's the standard way of remoting in JEE. So we have many options, and certainly we could start cheaply to, to test out the architecture and the ideas, and also have the option to give a small talk application that exists today a chance to integrate into a GE world and live longer, and we could then carry on with a more technically complicated solution. As you see, this is definitely not a work that one person or one company can do. This is something where the community should agree on if this is a good idea for a server architecture framework and then start working on it in a collaboration way. Otherwise, if this is a task too big. So that comes to the end of my talk. Um, let's repeat a bit. We have a strong success of Java in the server market, and it influenced also the development of the server market of the architectures and standard accepted today and the ones that we need to ag um, agree with. Smart is lacking any real server architecture support in the general. Um, there are individual vendor-specific implementations, but nothing that is used generally. Smartalk is definitely, although it might be painful for you, not acceptable at real enterprise level architectures. If you come with Smartalk, they ask you what standards you support and you just um, kick out or through the door. You don't have a chance to sell Smartalk as part of an enterprise architecture. Individual applications you might try, but not as part of the architecture. So we learned that JEE improved over 15 years by learning the proper use of abstractions, of metaprogramming, of separating business and framework concerns, and the proposition is to do the same for Smalltalk. And having a JEE connector would allow us to um, use Smalltalk components in a very transparent fashion 
from a JEE world, so that Smalltalk becomes acceptable, kind of problem invisible to uh, a customer in a big project. So what does it give? It gives existing Smalltalk applications a longer life, definitely. And it introduces new opportunities for Smalltalk projects as part of JEE projects. This is my role in the future with Novatech to find uses of small talk in enterprise systems. So one example that I'm just working on is there is the need to, in an explorative way, define missing unit tests, missing um, layer tests for a very big enterprise applications where they just forgot to do our tests, kind of. And um, the problem of discovering this test suite and of running these tests and see if they are any good it's a very flexible problem. It's a very agile problem. And so the idea is to do everything here in small talk because it's much cheaper to do it. But then this testing framework should, must be 100% integrated in the JEE world. So in the end, this must be JEE testing beans of JUnit, but that are actually implemented on the small talk side. Because the whole testing environment, of course, must be JEE. This is one of the requirements, which they didn't fulfill by not writing any tests. All right, that's the end of my um, talk. I might to do a little bit of advertising if I'm allowed to. Um, Novatech is a very fast-growing company in the German area, German-speaking area, but we are also looking towards China and Dubai. And one of the things that Novatech is doing successfully for many, many years since its foundation is to support student thesis, student projects, with the idea to recruit the students afterwards. So um, if, if you know somebody or if you are yourself are looking for interesting theses that are a little bit Java, but, and also, as I'm working on it, um, will include Smalltalk, that might be in the area of software analysis, of system discovery, of testing, of optimization tasks, of modeling tasks, just come to me. If you're looking at job, for a job in this area and are willing to move to Germany, come to me as well. Okay, thank you. Questions? Hello. Um, I also work at uh, an enterprise company in the Netherlands, which also has uh, yeah, large G2 or GEE applications and also a small talk application. And in your description of enterprise architecture, I missed one buzzword that was uh, SOA, Service Oriented Architecture. And in, in our experience, that's also a good way to combine uh, small talk and Java uh, through uh, something called an uh, enterprise service bus or something. And when you uh, communicate with a small talk system using messaging, uh, message queuing, it's also easy to get a robust and scalable system uh, without worrying about low level things like uh, green threads or, or threads. You can easily scale up uh, using uh, multiple small talk processes. And the, the only infrastructure you need on the small talk side is is a good uh, XML parser with support for namespaces. And then, yeah, you can uh, easily integrate your business functionality on the back-end side and on the front-end side. If you want, you can make a Seaside web application, which also plugs in the ESP. Okay. Okay, the one, there was a few, more, a few too many occurrences of the word easy. Um, uh, of course, this... Uh, it took us a year, but then... Yeah, um, this, this talk is about a JEE setting. So if you're going for a, a, a SOA approach with web services, for instance, or a messaging approach, of course, um, you don't need to do all these hoops here. Um, but we don't see much of this yet. Um, you see it more maybe in a, a SAP or Oracle environment uh, where this is um, the marketing hype um, at, the, at this time, although it's going for business process um, modeling. Um, no, this is for a, a customer who is running JEE environment, and their SOA and uh, is not really acceptable. The other thing is um, that's why I'm referring to you easy usage. Um, you still don't have what I would call a robust, scalable server architecture. You still are 
need to write everything yourself on the smart tag side. If you're not using Gemstone, for instance, which I don't know how much of this is supported today. Um, but if you're using VisualWorks or Faro, um, you're pretty much on your own here. And while this approach will help you to push a good bit of the scalability of the server infrastructure architecture on the JE side and just rely on the beans to do the right thing to you. But definitely your approach is, of course, an alternative. I wouldn't say this is the only way to do it, but this is um, the result of my thinking, how could I place Smalltalk in an environment where JE is set and it cannot be exchanged or argued against it? Okay, yeah, I understand, yeah. But I've also worked on, on the Java side, and Java also has some scalability problems. For example, when you have to integrate with even more legacy systems like COBOL, and then they'll end up using a messaging system as well. Well, you have the JCE approach, the Java connector architecture, which you could use for legacy systems. And in this sense, um, Smarter would be a legacy system which you, is used for distributed transaction for security um, services. Um, well, I'd like to love to have the Java scaling issues on the Smarter side. That would be a great improvement. Hi. Uh, I agree with your business case, but I think that if we as a community will make an effort, I don't like to stick to Java. I, I would like to stick to standard technologies. I mean, I don't know how is the, the situation in Europe, but I work for a company. Most of our projects are for the United States, and there is a, a big market for Microsoft technologies. So. If I have to make an effort to integrate with other technologies, I would like to think in, in a technology that allowed me to talk not only to Java, but also to, to Microsoft or with Ruby or whatever. So instead of implementing RMI uh, standards, I would like to work with web services, JSON, or something that is more interoperable. Okay. Um. Okay, there are two things here. One is um, the question of the um, technology um, behind it, and the other one is the communication a bit. Okay, so um, the whole point I wanted to make with this shadow container is that it is really helpful to mirror the architecture of the other side, whatever it might be, on the smart side, because having the same concept on both sides and be able to, to synchronize them in their lifetime, in their complete behavior. So making a concept be movable from one to the other side without disturbing anything. Um, this is a strong thing that I wanted to achieve. I want to be able to move a beam from one to the other side in the end and have the, and that needs the same architectural thinking, the same design sets you're doing in the end. And so if you're going for the Microsoft world, um, then you need to have a different small talk site, a different small talk architecture if you want to have achieve the same. It's not about how to communicate if it's RMI or if it's web services. This is a transport layer. This is of less importance here. The importance is to be part of the enterprise architecture. And so yes, it is, it is a decision for Java in the end. And that's why, what our market is. And it's a big market, believe me. Of course, I, I understand your point, but I'm not so sure to, to want to, be, to have uh, beans on the small talk size. I, I don't like that idea. I think that we can propose our own architecture and provide some ways over standard technologies to implement the communication. I don't, personally, I don't like the, the beans idea, and I know that in enterprise applications, it's not the, the unique solution for that. Ruby and, and Microsoft Technologies has proved they are, they are successful in enterprise environment without using those things. So I think that we as a small dog, we can have our own architecture independent of, of beans. But I recognize that this is your, your business, so okay for me. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, I also think that uh, we can uh, go with steps to this direction. And I think that the uh, first step is actually web services. 
Uh, but uh, we have services on all small talks, not only uh, on uh, visual works, for instance, which is, I know it's quite well done already, but also on Squeak Faro and others. And this is quite complicated uh, step already, which is not so simple. Then we can, uh, be, uh, we can communicate on this level to all other systems, not only to Java, but also to Microsoft, to Ruby and all. Also, uh, keep in mind that web services is not only SOA web services, but they are all REST web services to, co to connect with, uh, for instance, with uh, Amazon or with uh, Google and others. So this can be maybe a first step uh, towards uh, the, uh, the goal. Okay, do you hear me? Okay, great. Um, uh, I want to respond to that. Yes, web services is, is a good first step because it's there already and it's working for many dialects of Smalltalk. Um, I just want to alert you that the idea is that web services are not the application level communication layer, but they are a transport layer hidden behind a connection framework. So I don't want to use web services at the top level, but at the bottom level, making it completely invisible to the application developer. Um, the idea is the application developer has a smarter component, and if it's not Beans, well, name it differently, I think that the Bean idea is working well, and the same thing should be on the other side, and they communicate and use each other, and how it is implemented below that level really should be transparent. Um, that's, that's kind of a warning. Don't so say we can do web services directly to Google, for instance. There would be a different usage of web services here. A good one, but it's different. It should be two components on two different language words talking transparently to each other, one representing the computation behavior of the other one that's the facade to the real world outside. That's the idea behind it, okay? Um, Luca? <laughs> you should shout. <laughs> no, I just wanted to point out some research that is done uh, by Fabrizio Perrin at uh, the University of Bern. So he extracts, um, I, I quote here, recovery and analysis of transactional scope from scattered information in Java enterprise applications. So he reads XML files, he reads Java sources, he extracts annotations, he reads uh, SQL queries, and he builds a model in, in Moose, in Smalltalk, and does some pretty crazy stuff with, with this information. So you might be interested to have a look at his work. Definitely. Hello. Okay. Um, so this is interesting, and I might have a lot of general questions, but if we're going to buy into the JEE Kool-Aid uh, and say that we want to adapt that, this actually doesn't sound that difficult to me. You talk about this as a big effort that would, um, you know, too big for any one company, and in the sense of completely standardizing it, obviously, yes, it would. But most of these pieces, I think, are not that difficult. I mean, you mentioned RMI. RMI, we had a co-op student do in a week in a previous job, and most of it is RMI over IIOP anyway, uh, so it's essentially there. Um, I don't know. Some, the, the vague topic of making the servers scalable and robust is perhaps a big thing, but it seems to me that if a company had this as their business case, they could put a couple of bright people on it for six months and have an awfully good start. What? Uh, do you hear me still? Okay. Strange microphone. Um, yeah, you're right. Actually, I was um, trying to make a go and have the, a sketch of the container architecture and everything else before the ESAC ready in two months, uh, except that I got completely eaten up by other tasks. Um, yeah, that's true. The basic um, sketches, the basic implementation of it is not too terribly complicated. Uh, what makes it complicated is, and that's why I said it's, it needs to be done by the community, it needs to be adapted, it needs to be used. If it's not an accepted, community accepted general architecture that from then on many projects on the server side are using, then this is a waste. Then this, then this is, would be just a single tool for one company. Uh, it needs to be 
discussed and worked through by the community. So the community should feel okay using this and adapting it. Because otherwise, some of the positive effects, being standardized, having um, tools and frameworks, um, don't come. And you should know that you should never uh, underestimate the effort of doing tooling after you've done the technology. Okay? Anyone else? Yeah, yes, one question. Shout. Just regarding your point about um, inversion of control and dependency injection, a lot of my Java friends, and I've worked with a number of them, there's been a bit of a backlash against that because you get all of these kind of bean injection things, and it's very difficult to know what's been injected where, especially in large systems. And so in, in many respects, a lot of them are going back to the what's wrong with a constructor and just being explicit about what gets composed with what. So I'd almost beg you not to introduce that and just introduce like a pattern for create your objects this way. I mean, yeah, there's nothing wrong with injecting composable pieces. In fact, it's probably something that came from Smalltalk ages ago. But more just set the standard and do it and just don't have kind of little pragmas that inject bits in, you know, hard to find places. It's, it, it really is hard to maintain. Well, the, uh, that must be spring people um, because the, the Spring people started with dependent injection very early, and they did it all in XML files, and this was a complete pain in the behind. It was like visual programming. You have two files of your program not see seeable at the same time, so you never know what's going to be injected and how it's configured. You have to always swap between Java code and XML files. And the, today, the, the standard uh, advice for young people starting in this area is to write annotations because they're very explicit of what's going on and take them as a default documentation and for the deployment bit, and believe me, in JEE, it's maybe a percent of the uh, annotations, change them in the XML files to overwrite their behavior in a very specific sense. So the injection annotations, the pragmas, are as explicit as calling a constructor Well, in the example I've, I gave with the um, entity manager, the persistent, uh, persistency handling object, you really don't want to know at that place how you create this object. Believe me, you don't want this. So you, either you need to have a factory behavior that you call upon, and then you are as indirect as this injection, because the injection is nothing else but a metaprogramming step using a factory supplied by the container which, who has all the context information to create this, this um, entity manager. So there's... Just construct your object with something that requires those services and then ask that object to do it. Why do, why do you need all of the kind of the meta stuff to do that? I can just be explicit and say, I'm an object, you need to give me a persistence thing and I will communicate through that persistence thing. You don't really need all of this kind of meta stuff. You just well, That would be the same it. like asking the container to do it. I mean, uh, if, if, you do a, uh, if you have a good design, you don't need dependency injection, you don't need annotations. For example, annotations for saying that I'm going to use this class as a stateful is coupling you, your class, that, you know, that to, to that thing. I mean, you will always use that class or the, the instances of that class as stateful or stateless. So where is the reuse? I mean, you want to use that in another situation. You don't want to use a stateless. You want to use a stateful. You, don't, you cannot because you have the annotation that doesn't allow you the same thing. Annotation for persistence. Then you decide, you put the annotations in the class saying, oh, I, I'm going to map this uh, instance variable as a one to one mapping. But then you cannot use it in another way. So, uh, you know, I, I think most of the solutions that Java people provide, design solutions that they provide, is because of the mistakes they made. It, they are not really good design solutions, and, and that's my opinion. Of course, not everybody has to agree. <laughs> well, I think um, that there are two sides to that thing. Um, what Andreas is saying is that EJB have won the market. So, so how do we run after that? How, how could we try to get a share of that? And I think it's a good idea to, to just be open, uh, even if we know some of the design decisions aren't aren't the right ones, or aren't the ones that we would take today. 
Um, but um, I think it's important to think about why people like that. I mean, uh, as Andreas showed, it's, it's really easy to write an EJB and it's going to provide something. Um, nobody's asking for, for maintenance or quality of code in that case. It's just big enterprises are using that stuff. Um, so um, I, I, I like the idea of going that into that direction and to, to, to try and, and catch up with that. Um, and uh, I guess we should just discuss the things and, and see how far we want to go in that direction. Um, it's, it's, it's no good just having better answers that nobody wants to hear. And that's the problem we have here. Um, and that's probably exactly what you wanted to say. You, you oh, just wanted to kay. open a discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cut off. Yeah. Sorry for that. Well, that's a good conclusion. Thank you.